If only, if only you could find your talent, if only you could discover your talent, your passion, your magical fairy tale path in life, everything would be solved, right? This is a huge thing that we talk about in the self-improvement community, how to discover what your talents are, your strengths, how to find your passion. I'm going to talk about that subject today and give you a couple of tips that you can use to move in that direction. These are tips that personally helped me find my passion of becoming a writer and doing things like getting on YouTube, podcasts, things like that, things that really fit and clicked for me. These are the strategies that I've talked about in many of my books and these are strategies that I have taught and people have successfully used to find and discover their talents. So we're gonna dive into those today, but before we do, make sure to hit the subscribe button, subscribe to the channel, also make sure you hit the little, little notification bell, excuse me, because it's gonna help you get brand new videos the moment they come out, so make sure you do that. And without further ado, we're gonna dive into the tips on discovering your talent. So tip number one, it's not even necessarily a tip, it's just understanding that you probably already know what you want to do with your life, but you're scared. You know, I've kind of, I kind of always sort of knew that I wanted to be a writer. There were just um, kind of hints in my past, which I'll talk about here in a little bit. But you kind of have this sense of what you really want to do with your life, but you're primarily just blocked by those fears and you just think you have an inability to pull off that goal. You know, I've tried this this little conversational experiment with people over and over again. Uh, I'll kind of ask them what they want to do with their life. Um, they'll give me kind of the the boring kind of PC answer. Oh, you know, I want to rise up the ranks of the corporation or get to get this nice little job here. You know, move up, get this position. Blah 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 blah. Right. Then the next thing I do is I say, no, no, no. What do you really actually want to do with your life? Like, let's say that if you tried it you wouldn't fail and it would just work out, no problems whatsoever, what would you do? All of a sudden, they have the answer. They know what they would wanna do with their life. So when it comes to figuring out what your talents are, you know, start by considering that question. What are some of the things that you would be doing if you knew that you would not fail? Would you be a writer? Would you be an artist? Would you start a business? Do you, do you have gifts for communication and organizing. Maybe you could be an event planner, all these different ideas. I'll kind of dive into the specifics a little bit more of how to translate those, but you already know what it is that you want to do. The fear is getting in your way. And the question you ask yourself, the question we all ask ourselves is, how do we get over that fear? You know, it's, it's, it's kind of sad really that these kind of invisible psychological barriers keep us from doing the things that we really want. And I try to honor how real those feelings are because your perception is your reality. I mean, you see people walking around, the vast majority of people not doing what they wanna do with their life, stuck in the psychological box that shows how real their perception is. You know, you have these narratives and scripts and kind of laws and rules raining down on you from society that tell you that you have to be a certain way Combine that with the way that your brain is wired, which is, you know, you have a, a brain that is wired to seek status and approval and avoid social rejection and embarrassment. So you have the double-sided uh, effort from society trying to keep you in a box and then your own brain trying to keep you in a box um, to keep you from doing the things that you know you want to do. And, you know, I don't necessarily have the most amazing answer to that. Uh, the answer that I give to the question is pretty similar in all of my videos, and it's starting small and building a feedback loop. You always want to deposit wins into your mind to create that winner's effect. The more wins you have, the more you stack on top of each other, the more you feel like a winner, the more you feel worthy of achieving that life path. So if your talent is for writing, you're gonna to have to write. If your talent is for public speaking, you're gonna to have to speak. If your talent is for business, you're gonna to have to start that business. If your talent is nurturing and caring and starting some profitable or nonprofit organization, you're gonna to have to do the little baby steps, do the research, start to build on that. Uh, I'll link to some other videos that can talk about that process of gaining momentum a little bit, but the first block you need to remove 
is this idea that you have no idea what your talents are. You have some uh, some inclination of what to do. So start with that in mind. Uh, the next thing that you can do is if you really, 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 really super, super duper feel stuck is use personality test. Uh, now this is something that I mentioned in my free checklist, which you can grab below. If you're on YouTube, you can grab in the description below, check that out. Um, maybe I'll make sure to put a link to that on all platforms that I post this on. But in that checklist, you'll see one of the items is to go through and use personality tests. Now, do I think personality tests are scientifically accurate? Um, no, I don't. Uh, so uh, actually a colleague of mine, uh, Ben Hardy, he just put out a brand new book called Personality Isn't Permanent. And he spends a good portion of the book kind of poo-pooing on personality tests. And the reason that he does that is that he believes that they kind of put you into a box where, you know, you think that you have this core, you know, set of uh, talents or strengths or whatever, and that you can't deviate outside of that, that you have some fixed entity of a personality that can't change. When in reality, your personality is kind of malleable and changeable. So why then if personality tests or things like strength finder, um, different mechanisms you can use to point yourself in a direction, why would I still advocate for those things? I advocate for those things because they help you move in a direction. Uh, we're gonna talk about this in a, a point in a little bit here, but the actual positive motion, the actions you're gonna take are gonna help you figure out what you wanna do more so than just thinking about it. So if you go through and you take a test and it comes up with some answers and maybe you use those answers to get started, yeah, maybe you're not pointed in the perfect scientifically accurate direction that you could possibly ever think of, but if it gets you that mental effect to put yourself in motion, then it's worthwhile for me. You know, I'm a big believer in the idea of placebos or little mental tricks to make you feel like you're moving in a certain direction, right? So I will use every psychological kind of trick in the book, even if it's not quote unquote, purely scientifically accurate, right? To move in that direction. So check out that checklist below. There'll be uh, links to all the different personality tests and strengths tests that I recommend. And then you can just take some of those recommendations and run with them in the future. Uh, the next thing you can do is to get feedback from the world. People will tell you what you are good at. People will give you hints and clues as to what might be you know, a future path for you. So for example, in my case, whenever I would write essays, my teachers would leave comments saying that I was an above average essay writer, right? People would always talk about my vocabulary and how articulate, how articulate I was, excuse me, irony that I fumbled my words using the word articulate, but you get the point. They would always talk about my ability to use these words, um, communicate, public speaking. You know, throughout school, I could basically, with zero preparation, get in front of the whole class and give a talk uh, on something that I just learned five minutes ago while I was scrapping together the presentation right before I needed to do it, and I would kind of execute uh, these speeches flawlessly while other students who prepared wouldn't do as well as I did. So I've always, the, all of these things have kind of been in my wheelhouse and you can see how they relate to each other a little bit from the writing to public speaking uh, to being on camera. Like these are things that come more naturally to me, right? So I first discovered writing, you know, when a friend asked me to write for his website and it clicked right away for me, right? So if you don't have someone who is gonna give you an opportunity like my friend did for me, pay attention to what people are telling you. Uh, you know, people will tell me things like, you know, that I had a good voice, that I should be on radio, uh, which is leading to a podcast, which I'll actually add a link to below, by the way, I'm on a podcast, just so you know, there's a link to that. But enough, enough with the plugs, but you get the idea that people are gonna tell you. And oftentimes it's gonna be some things that you cast off that you don't think is really all that important, but other people kind of see that talent in you or they wish they were able to do the things like you're able to do. So 
you know, some people are very stylish and it comes naturally to them. You know, there are entire businesses teaching people how to get their style better or becoming like a personal stylist for other people. You know, some people are very outgoing, um, gregarious, you know, so me, like I'm more outgoing when it comes to uh, kind of formal communication, but there are some people who are just natural connectors and engagers and networkers. So this could lead to things like uh, event planning, or it's just it's just a good kind of general leadership skill to have. So think about that. Um, you know, if you're someone uh, someone comes to for advice quite a bit, maybe you know you have kind of an empathetic nature. This could lead you into you know maybe helping other people, coaching, doing things like that. The point is. People are going to tell you what you're good at. And it's going to be, you know, the best feedback is not necessarily going to come to the people from the people who are closest to you, but it's from the people who are like kind of in the periphery, like your colleagues, you know, people you kind of know, even strangers, co workers, authority figures growing up, you know, people who are close enough to know who you are, but they're distant enough where they can kind of be objective to what your talents are. So listen to what those people have to say and use the things they say as recommendations for directions you can move in the future. <clears throat> well, the most the most important tip I could give you is to, you know, you're going to find you're going to find that passion, you're going to discover that talent kind of progressively through your work. Um, and actually there's a really great TED Talk. Maybe I'll link to that too. There's a TED Talk by Robert Green where he talks about the idea of finding your passion through your work and you know backstory on Robert Greene he kind of had always sort of wanted to be a writer right but he bounced around he did a bunch of random odd jobs for like multiple decades and he really didn't even dis or he really didn't even fully you know have a writing career until he was like in his late 40s or 50s right so he took all these odd jobs but he was kind of practicing writing at the same time and he would do writing for different types of company so he'd do a little freelance writing then he would do some journalism then he wrote screenplays and basically over time you know he was always kind of crafting his writing but he was bouncing between different forms of writing and kind of getting a feel for what he really wanted to do and then he was working all of these odd jobs and you know what he noticed throughout these jobs was that you know there was these these power games and dynamics going on right so all the experience kind of dealing with people in his various jobs, which gave him a lot of like worldly experience. And then him practicing his writing for that length of time led to him writing the book, The 48 Laws of Power. So he combined his practice of writing with the life experience that he gained to that point and kind of combined them into that book. So that's one thing that's gonna help you when it comes to discovering your talents, finding your passion and turning it into something is understanding that all of the moments in your life are valuable. All the experience that you've gained is valuable. Even if you're working at a job where you don't necessarily like, you're still picking up skills. You're still building a foundation for something better in the future. So pay attention to your life as you are living it. What skills are you picking up while you're working? Maybe you're a salesperson and you don't necessarily love what you're selling, but you're good at sales. That means maybe you should find something to sell that you're actually kind of passionate about. Um, you know, maybe you're working in retail and maybe you don't love your retail job, but it's given you the ability to become a better communicator, you know, do conflict resolution and be adaptable and think on your feet. You know, and those are skills maybe you could translate into doing customer service when you start a business of your own. You know, you get the picture of what I'm saying. You have to use every experience in your life as a lens for what you can see happening in your future and kind of combining all of these things and just actually listening, uh, listening to that voice inside of you, um, combining it with your experience and taking that leap. That's what's going to help you discover what your big magical fairy tale passion is. And this, this stuff is going to change over time. You know, in the beginning, I started writing a couple articles and that was fun. And then it grew to writing books. And now I'm kind of playing around with different forms of media and who knows what's going to happen in the future, but I'll continue to discover more things I'm talented at and passionate about as I move forward, you know? So what I want to leave you with is 
don't kind of sit around and wait for this magical talent to just fall and, you know, fall right in your lap. That's not how it's going to work. You're going to, you know, look for those little clues to get you started, start, build those feedback loops, build momentum, build confidence over time, build competence, which will create passion, which will help you discover more talents. And if you do this long enough, you'll kind of create this positive flywheel to help you create uh, kind of serendipitous, passionate magic for the rest of your life. Okay, if you want to dive more in depth and kind of get a full picture more than just a 15 minute video on this process, you'll want to grab my book, Real Help, which you can find in the description below. It includes an entire chapter on finding your strengths and then goes through tips on how to see that plan all the way through. The next thing I want you to do is go in the description and see the link for the free checklist, which is actually a chapter of my book, which teaches you how to find those profitable strengths so you can get a little taste. Just click the link, put your email in there, and you'll have that free download right away. Lastly, make sure to like the video. Smash that like button if you enjoy the content. Leave your two cents, leave a comment. Make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel and hit the notification bell so you can get brand new videos when they come out. You will shortly be seeing some videos pop in front of your face. Feel free to check those out, and I will see you on the next video.